Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you my fourth project for my sweet week. Um, again, still using the delightful Feels Like Frost. Um, and this is the beautiful Feels Like Frost DSP that I just adore. Um, it's a, a cute little hanging box. Um, I did actually get the idea of this from Linda Parker, who is Paper Craft with Crafty. Um, she did one uh, last year, I think it was, with Christmas paper. Um, but I really liked, I really liked it, and I just thought, yeah, I, I want to have a go at making those, and they are super cute. As you can see, they've got Hershey's Kisses inside. I'm guessing you could use any small treat, really. Um, but yeah, just super cute and perfect for the 6x6 DSP as well. So I'll show you how I made it. So to start off with then, you will need a sheet of DSP that is 6 by 4 and a quarter, or in centimetres that will be 15.5 by 11. And then you will need on your long side to score at 1 and 3 eighths two and three quarters, four and one eighth, and five and a half. And in centimetres that will be three and a half, seven, ten and a half, and fourteen. And then going to rotate and score at I was reading the centimetres then I thought three and a half, that's that's far too far. Uh, one and three eighths um, two and three quarters, I keep reading the centimetres, two and three quarters and three and three quarters. And in centimetres that will be three and a half, seven and nine and a half. If you have a piece of paper that has de de direction on it like this one, make sure when you're doing it that you score as you are looking at your paper. So score with it this way so your image is correct when you do the long side and then when you rotate rotate it clockwise because you're going to need your top of your paper to the right okay trust me I know I made that mistake the first time I did it okay so what we now need to do is fold and burnish these lovely score lines so I'm just going to go along and burnish them all. And I'm going with the silver side on this one. I do love the inside of this one but I thought I wanted to give you an option of seeing the both. So once you've done all of that you then need your scissors. So to start off with you're going to have a, th a thin strip to the top and a thin strip down the right hand side and we need to cut up all of these bottom ones and then when you get to the right we can cut away that thin one just there okay then once you've done that you then need to with your four at the bottom here we need to tuck the first one under and then we need to cut this one just to that and then fold this one under and cut this one the same. So you now have this shape going on. Okay, the reason we're doing this is because we need to get our hole punch in here to create our window. You can use dies if you want, but obviously I'm not. So with your one inch circle punch, what I'm going to do is actually use my silver foil and this will become clear in a moment. So using my silver foil I'm punching a one inch circle. Keep hold of this you will need it in a moment. So my one inch circle I'm going to pop some snail on the back and then on this square here above the one that we've just cut, so this square here, we need to pop this as central as you can. So making sure you've got equal width all the way around and then we're going back in with our one inch circle punch and we are simply 
going to realign that silver circle that we did before and punch it out. That will leave you your circle. So we're going to flip it over to start with and we're going to pop a window sheet. Can you see it? It's really hard to see. There we go. We're going to pop the window sheet on the inside. Now I generally just use my glue dots on the four corners and the window sheet measures one and a quarter inches by one and a quarter inches which is three by three centimetres. So I'm just going to pop that one in there. Flip this back over and there we have our window sheet in place. But I want to add my frame and for that Oh bless me, sorry, a little sneeze. I'm using my one and three eighth scalloped circle punch. I'm going back into this silver foil now where I first took that inch out. And obviously I want to now make sure I get the original circle in the centre lined up. And then when we punch that out, we have our frame. So I'm actually going to use a little bit of wet glue for this because it's just easier. So I'm just going to pop that all the way around. And then simply lay this without getting too stuck up with glue over that original inch punch. I've got lots of glue everywhere now. Okay, all over my shiny foil but not to worry. So now we have that in place you can see how pretty that will be. So I'm now going to add some of my beautiful tear and tape. In fact no I'm not, sorry. I'm going to use my snail because it's DSP. So I'm just going to run some snail down that side and then fold this over to seal it up and then back to my front bit here and what I'm going to do is tuck these small ones in first but what I'm going to do is run some snail on them. so that that then will be held in place. In fact, I know what I just remembered. Cut a very, very small slither off the sides here, just because otherwise they don't quite sit neatly. So I have my snail on there. This can now go over. I'm just going to pop my finger inside just to press that glue down and then this one obviously you can put on your desk add some more snail and fold that one over and then if you want to just get that bone folder inside and press it all down pop your chocolates inside and then I'm just going to pinch the sides together and line the top up just like that. So it's like a little mini milk carton. And then I've actually used a couple of my pegs here to hold this in place because the next part I want to add my hanging loop. So I'm using the Whisper White polka dot tool ribbon and I just have a tiny bit left here so that's just enough don't need that circle anymore and I have my take your pick tool um, and all I simply have done is I've popped it onto the edge of my grid paper here and then I've just pushed a small hole and then just very gently keep going until you've gone all the way through. Sadly we don't have a small hole punch anymore otherwise I would have used that. Um, 
I have a darning needle here that is perfect for this. Um, so I folded my ribbon in two, into half there, and then I'm just going to fold the edges to make them narrower to fit through my needle. Obviously if you want to use a different ribbon you can do. Have crumbs. It's always the fiddly bits that go wrong isn't it? Right there we go. So there's my ribbon and then I'm just going to feed it through there, gently pull it through There we go, and then I'm actually going to use this while it's still in there to fold it through the loop. And then I'm just going to keep pulling at the far end of my ribbon to tighten it up. And then obviously you can take your pegs off because it's now closed really well and then I just needed to tie the top end together so that it can be used to hang off a tree or wherever you wish to hang these cute little decorations and then I'm just going to cut that ribbon quite short and there's your little hanging hook I'm going to put that away before I lose it. And so there they are. These cute little hanging Christmas ornaments. I think they're really cute. I don't know which one I like better, the silver or the pink. But they're both cute. Thank you, Linda. Hope you like them. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye.